Good morning. I'm the Reverend Lynn Spencer Smith, along with the membership of First Congregational United Church of Christ of Great Falls, Montana. I welcome you to this time of worship. In the church liturgical calendar, today is All Saints Day, a day to remember the influence of those who have gone before us and give thanks to God for them and their lives. During today's service, we'll be remembering those who have died during the past year. If you'd like to participate more deeply in a ritual of remembrance, you will want to have a candle available to light later in the service. We'll also be participating in Holy Communion. If it is in harmony with your tradition, I invite you to bring some form of bread, a cracker, some cereal, or a piece of bread, and some juice or a suitable beverage. One of the things we are coming to realize during this pandemic is that even though we are physically separated from one another, the Holy Spirit is still capable of uniting us in worship, prayer, and today at various tables where we gather in the Spirit of Christ. It is our hope that your time in worship with us will be a meaningful part of your journey of life and faith. Know that we welcome everyone, just as you are, into this time of worship. We honor the beautiful person God has created you to be, and we are grateful that you have chosen to worship with us. Welcome.
Good morning and welcome to worship. There are many who have walked the path toward God before us, showing us the way with their lives. We give thanks for them. As they were called, so are we, to live as Jesus did, answering the call of God, saying, Here I am, send me. We ask for guidance and courage. We are, each of us, like those who have gone before us, a strange mixture of saint and sinner. God accepts us that way and fills us with the Spirit who empowers us to act. Let us pray. God of the ages, you have blessed us with saints all of our lives, those who put up with us and those who have prepared us for discipleship, those who have touched us with their compassion and those who illumine the way for us, those who challenge us because they know our capacity and those who hold our hands when our hearts break, those who have gone before us and those who will follow us in life and faith. As we give thanks for all the saints, we pray for your gentle, compelling spirit to bless our community. In Christ we remember, and in Christ we pray. Amen.
husband of Linda Berg. Catherine or Kitty Brond. Nicholas Seto. Jim Corning, father of Cindy Horde. Violet Duncan, granddaughter of Doug and Pat Livingstone. Terence Fifield, son of May Fifield. Farley Gonzalez, father of Norman Menzales. Damon Heck, husband of Amber and father of Kyler, Kaysen, Chloe, and Cora. Joyce Kustra, mother of Bob Kustra. Anne Lee, mother of Jan Robitaille. Helen McGilbra, aunt of Sarah Branham. Brad Oakland, son of Dan and Sharon Oakland. Duella Olson. Lewis or Nikki Parker, brother of Ray Parker. Glenn Rausch, father of Kay Neal. Mev Shipley, mother of Ron Shipley. Nancy and Bob Stegmiller, beloved members of the Montana Northern Wyoming Conference Outdoor Ministries. Fern Tronstad, grandmother of Sarah Davidson. Robert Venets, brother of Ed Venets. Cecil Warren, husband of Bonnie Warren. And two people known through the wider United Church of Christ, the Reverend Evan Golder and Reverend Avery Post, past president of the United Church of Christ. And let us continue in prayer. Holy God of wind and fire, dance through our hearts today. Holy God of earthquakes and illness, share our tears of sadness and pain. Holy God of creation and new beginnings, show us again your vision of healing and wholeness for all who have died and for all the gifts of new life. We give you thanks, faithful God. Amen.
Joshua was the chosen replacement to lead the Israelites into the Promised Land after Moses died. Before crossing the Jordan River into the Promised Land, God instructed him to prepare the people and the priests about how they would get across the river. Let us hear a reading from the book of Joshua, chapter 3, verses 1 through 6 and 14 through 17. Joshua took down the camp early in the morning. He and all the Israelites marched out of Shittim and came to the Jordan, where they had stayed overnight before crossing. At the end of three days, the officers went through the middle of the camp. They commanded the people, As soon as you see the Lord your God's chest containing the covenant and the Levitical priests carrying it, you are to march out from your places and follow it. But let there be some distance between you and it, about 3,000 feet. Don't come near it. You will know the way you should go, even though you've never traveled this way before. Joshua said to the people, Make yourselves holy. Tomorrow the Lord will do wonderful things among you. Then Joshua said to the priests, Lift up the covenant chest. Go along in front of the people. So they lifted up the covenant chest and went in front of the people. The people marched out from their tents to cross over the Jordan. The priests carrying the covenant chest were in front of the people. When the priests who were carrying the chest came to the Jordan, their feet touched the edge of the water. The Jordan had overflowed its banks completely, the way it does during the entire harvest season. But at that moment, the water of the Jordan coming downstream stood still. It rose up as a single heap very far off, just below Adam, which is the city next to Zarenthan. The water going down to the desert sea, that is the des Dead Sea, was cut off completely. The people crossed opposite Jericho. So the priests carrying the Lord's covenant chest stood firmly on dry land in the middle of the Jordan. Meanwhile, all Israel crossed over on dry land until the entire nation finished crossing over the Jordan. This is the reading for today. May God bless all that we have heard. Early on in my weekly worship and sermon development process, I will often go back into my files into previous years and see if there's something there that I can use again, or at least see what I was, was doing in previous years. And so when I went back and looked in what I, what I did three years ago, I found an interesting statement that I had made, and I want to share that with you. I said, this is an odd wilderness in which we find ourselves these days, and every time we think the way is clear, just a little bit, something happens that complicates things even deeper. For the life of me, I have no idea what was going on three years ago that would lead me to say such a thing other than just some sort of a precursor to what's going on with us now. Well, today, in our scriptures, we get to walk around with Joshua a bit as he takes on his first big leadership responsibility. He's the one that was chosen to follow in Moses' rather large footsteps and take the Israelites from the wilderness into the Promised Land. Much like their entrance into the wilderness 40 years earlier, they had to deal with water. This time it was the flooding Jordan River not the Red Sea. This time they were not dealing with Pharaoh's army that was pursuing them. This time they were looking forward into the promise that God had made with their ancestors generations back. But there was still this water that they had to deal with. And this wasn't any, any little trickle of a stream. This was the Jordan River at flood stage. These were big waters, and these big waters were all that lie between the people and the promised land. These big waters were the last big thing they needed to get through in order to get to where they were going. And when I say they, I mean the folks that were there and all their ancestors. Those who live near big waters know that they are not anything to take lightly. 
especially when they are in flood stage. They are full and they are fast and they can be deadly. There would be no one swimming across to the other side. There would be no rafts or boats or kayaks or canoes. These were the kind of waters that take divine action to cross. So the instructions were there. The instructions were there for that to happen. And what was supposed to happen was the Levitical priests were supposed to carry the Ark of the Covenant, that special box that held the commandments, and take it to the river's edge. And then the people were supposed to follow at a distance, and they did. And the priests carrying the ark, that special box, got to the river's edge, and they, and they touched their feet to the edge of the water. And then that last barrier that had been between them and the land that they and all their ancestors had sought was overcome by some guys dipping in their toes as if they were testing the temperature of bath water. And it sounds like it was a piece of cake. Now, I've been to the edge of rivers before, and I've even dipped my toes into them, and I've waded into them and, and gone across them. And at no time was there any indication that the waters were going to stop flowing. There was something else at work here at the edge of the Jordan River. Something else here at work other than the holy toes of a bunch of priests. So, remember the box that they were carrying on their shoulders? Don't forget that they were carrying the physical manifestation of the presence of God. There are waters before us, big waters flood stage waters. We are at the confluence of three rivers of a global pandemic, a contentious political climate that probably won't calm down after the election on Tuesday, and global climate change that is stirring up storms on the East Coast, fires in the West, and winter arriving in our neck of the woods a month or two ahead of schedule. Throw in a few contributories of uncertainty about the economy, unemployment, and the future of the church, and it's enough to make a person want to turn around and go back to Egypt. Who would want to dip their toes into that torrent? Don't forget about the box. Don't forget that God has this thing about showing up at the edge of the water and calming things down. We come up against barriers all the time. Physical barriers, emotional barriers, financial barriers, spiritual barriers. And sometimes they are like the big waters of flood stage that seem impossible to overcome. So how do we deal with that? Where do we get what it takes to go to the river's edge and dip our toes in? How do we carry the presence of God with us as we do? Or do we? Do we make the work of overcoming barriers more difficult because, well, we think we have to yell louder or push harder or blow something up in order to remove it? If it's about us using our own brawn, why even bother with God? God just becomes a relic to carry around in a box to show off when it's convenient. There's a reason it was the priests who were responsible for carrying the physical manifestation of God to the water's edge, because it wasn't about them. It was about God's commitment to the covenant that God had made with the people. Remember what that covenant was and still is? It's basically that God will be their God and they will be God's people. It's a covenant that has been passed along through the generations, taking on different manifestations and expressions across a variety of communities, but always, always, 
The bottom line is God will be their God and they will be God's people. And it gets expanded a bit as God says, I will be with you always. Always. As the church, we claim that manifestation through Jesus Christ, the one who embodied what the priests carried in that box, an everlasting covenant with God, a covenant that endures through wilderness journeys and pandemics, a covenant that rises above political divisions and grounds us in grace, a covenant that can and will renew the earth and all its inhabitants. I'll say again what I said three years ago. This is an odd wilderness in which we find ourselves these days. And every time we think the way is clear just a little bit, something happens that complicates things even deeper. Yet, yet, we can go forth to dip our toes at the river's edge as we carry Christ with us. May we do so, united in spirit and held together in the love of God. Amen. I invite you to join with me in the spirit of prayer. Look at us, God. Look deeply at us and see the longing, the hunger, the pain, the disbelief, the hopes. These are the things we bring to you today seeking your gaze and your mercy into what you see. Look deeply at us, O oh God, and see that we long for what you long, peace, justice, mercy, a world lacking in hunger and filled with justice, a world lacking in poverty and filled with abundance, a world lacking in violence and filled with peace. Look deeply into us, O oh God, and show us the way. Look deeply at us, O oh God, and see the places of joy, the radiance of love, the gratitude that spills out and runs amok, disrupting fear and worry and greed. Look deeply at us, O oh God, and see the work of your hands and bless us once again. Listen deeply to us, O oh God, and hear us joining in prayer with the word your Son, our Savior, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The church is many things for all of us and many different things for each of us. At its best, the church is a gift to the world, a gift that lives into God's love and grace. Through whatever we can offer, we become a part of that gift. This is a time like none other. Yet in the midst of the uncertainty, your gifts have continued to support the ongoing and evolving ministries of our church. If you would like to support those ongoing ministries, donations can be sent to First Congregational United Church of Christ, Post Office Box 6303, Great Falls, Montana, 59406, or through our website, at www.greatfallsucc.org. Let us use this time to consider our gifts.
invite you to be with me in the spirit of the prayer as we dedicate our gifts. Let's pray. All that we have is yours, O oh God. Thank you for your trust in us to do what is right with what you give us. As we turn a portion of our earnings and the work of our hands to your care, we pray that it will bring strength to the church, hope for the downtrodden, peace to places of unrest, and evidence of your love to those in doubt. We pray and we give in the name of Jesus, whom we call Christ. Amen. Throughout the church's history, the breaking of bread has been a keystone for Christian community and grace. Although we are not together physically to take part in this meaningful act, we are together in spirit. Even though separated, we embrace our joys and needs as one. Just as if we were gathered at one table, our gathering in new ways is always open to all who wish to join. As we see the bread and juice in whatever form you have before you today, see within it the bread of heaven, created by the labor of hands, combining the elements of the earth, blessed and broken and shared. May we also see bread, not unlike that which was taken by Jesus, blessed, broken, and shared with those who gathered at table with him. He invited them to take and eat in remembrance of him. We are invited to do the same. May we see in the cup that is before us, blessed and poured out and shared, a sign of the new covenant made in Christ living, dying, and rising again, a covenant embraced by those who first sat with Jesus, a covenant into which we are invited. Let us pray. God of angels and saints, we bring to our tables common elements of our lives and ask your blessing upon them. Transform them from what we bring to what you offer, grace, justice, and hope. As we share the goodness of the earth, may we become your instruments to bring forth the goodness of heaven. Amen. I invite you to take and eat the bread of heaven, the bread of Christ, and take and drink the cup of salvation, the cup of the new covenant. Let us join together in the spirit of prayer. Bountiful God, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us at your table by granting us the presence of Christ. Strengthen our faith, increase our love for one another, and send us forth into the world in courage and peace, rejoicing in the Holy Spirit. Amen.
refreshed in the love of God made real to us through Jesus our Christ. May we go forth into the world fully equipped to dip our toes at the water's edge, knowing that the presence of God goes with us. So may the love of God, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Go in peace. Thank you.